By now, you've probably seen clips from this horror movie called Megan. It's insane, right? Well, that creepy voice coming out of the AI doll is Jenna Davis's, and she's also a singer. She has 8.6 million followers across all social platforms. She's been on Disney Channel, gone on tour, and voiced one of the biggest horror characters of this year, all before turning 18. As I've grown as a writer, I've come to learn that it's important to write and at whatever emotion you're feeling. And today, she sat down with us to give some great practical advice for upcoming creatives. This is what I needed when I was starting my music career. This is The Logan Alexandra Show. So I'm super excited to be sitting down with you today. I'm so excited. You're my third interview. Third, okay. Third, and I'm honored to be with you and talk ah, about music. I'm honored to be with you. Yeah, thanks. Fun fact, we have never officially met until now, mm -hmm. but we've had several online DMs, messages. Yeah. I feel like I know you. <laughs> I know. I feel like I know you too. Which is the crazy thing about the online world is because yeah. I know you, but I don't know you until... Really, today, right? I know. Yeah, today. It's cool. Sometimes you feel like they know you better than some people that in real right? life. Yeah. So wacky. Yeah. That's what I like, too, like when I connect with fans and supporters and things of that sort. I feel like I know them when I meet them in person, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy. I know. Because you're DMing them a lot. They know like all the little details of what's going on in your yeah, life. Yeah, and they're and super supportive. And there was a set of twins I remember at a tour, and... There's this app called Cameo, and we would Cameo live a lot together, and I met them in person, and it was so surreal, because mm -hmm. I felt like I already knew them, mm -hmm. but I didn't. Yeah, that's so fun. I haven't so been crazy. able to meet anyone that I've talked to online, like, fan-wise. You will. You will. Yeah. It's going to happen. This, yeah. is, this is the year. Yeah, but I feel like I know them. Like, we have, like, inside jokes and Aww. stuff like that. Yeah, I'm sure you do, too. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, it's going to be the year you're going to meet them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's it? So... We're sitting behind your 1 million subscriber um, <laughs> thing. I was like looking over there. I'm like, yeah, that's the goal for me. we just put those up a little while ago, which is crazy. So exciting. When did you hit a million? Recently? I don't even remember the exact date, to be honest with you. I just recently hit 2 million. I feel like I don't pay attention to the numbers as much as people would think. Yeah. I'm more focused on the content and just kind of having fun with it. Because I feel, I feel as though numbers are are quite silly and if you just enjoy what you do and love what you do and people will support you and you know those numbers will come with time mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful that everybody who watches my channel whether they started at when I had a hundred thousand or two million or anything so it's quite surreal truly but I guess I don't pay attention to the numbers that much because I don't mm -hmm. I don't even remember I feel like some people know exactly when but I don't I just keep on focusing on the content and creating and just having fun with it and seeing yeah. where things go you know yeah and seeing the your fans as like human not just a number like exactly. you were saying you have connections with your fans very so. much so and yeah. I think that's really important is you know as much as it is oh subscribers whether well, each individual people that enjoyed your channel so much that they subscribe to it and I think that's such a blessing and it's so cool to see that mm. for sure and I don't even think I can comprehend two million people yeah and I even tell people who have 7,000 subscribers or 100 or 500, I say you have to think of those as individual bodies in a room. Mm -hmm. Think about how many people that is. That's so cool. Whether it is 100 or 1,000 or a million, mm -hmm. that's still a lot of bodies in a room. So yeah. that's really cool to think that people support and show love to your page. A yeah. small number, big number. Yeah, imagine two million people watching I can't, you I can't. like do something. It's so surreal to me. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So when did you release your first song? Because you're a musician. Yeah. That's your main thing. So my first song was called Breathing Fire. I released that, I believe, when I was 10. Okay. But at the time, I didn't write my own music. Hmm. I started writing my own music when I released my song Summer of 19. That was my first song I ever wrote by myself because hmm. it was because of my first heartbreak. I feel like that's when everybody starts is yes. getting their emotions out there. But ever since then, I write every day, all the time. And that was my first song. But I didn't really count it as my first song because I didn't write it. Mm -hmm. And for me, whenever I write music, it's like a part of me and a piece of me. Mm -hmm. I still love that song and I still enjoy it, but I don't really consider it my first because I didn't write it. Yeah. What's your songwriting process look like now? Sure. It's 
quite random. Mm-hmm. I feel as though I write in any scenario. For a while, it was just when I was angry or upset. But as I've grown as a writer, I've come to learn that it's important to write in whatever emotion you're feeling. Mm. So I typically write in the notes of my phone. That's my secret place. I won't let anybody in there <laughs> ever. Uh, but whenever I'm feeling something, it could quite frankly be right now or in a supermarket or wherever I'm at. I'll get lyrics in the most in melodies in the most awkward places and scenarios. So I think that's why I have my phone on me mm-hmm. because I can just type it out or write it and then expand it further on. Some songs I could write in a span of 30 minutes to 15 minutes. Some songs take a couple of days. Some take a couple of months. But it's also just depending on what the song is, how I'm feeling in the moment. I mean, there are times when I'm in Nashville and I'm in writer's rooms and we're writing all together and the purpose is, oh, hey, we're writing a song here. But other times it's just because how I'm feeling or just because I want to write for fun. I write up here a lot, all the time. Yeah. When you are writing stuff in your notes, then do you like come home and try to figure it out on the piano? Yeah, yeah. I do. And sometimes I'll just do it in my car. I have a lot of voice Mm -hmm. memos in my car. Yeah. I feel as though things happen when you're in public too, that you just hop in the car and I think of something weird in the supermarket and then I kind of, I sit in my car and I expand on it. My mom calls me and she's like, what are you doing in your car? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm writing, mom, I'm writing. Yeah. Because I'm the type of person that comes up with the lyric and melodies and things like that prior to the instruments and everything that's involved. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my process. And that's why I tell people a lot is people ask me, how do I start songwriting? And I said, just use the notes of your phone. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Because you can come up with a melody in your head and then just screen record it or voice memo it so you can remember what it is. Yeah. Because you'll forget in a matter of seconds. And Mm -hmm. that's the worst thing ever is coming up with a great melody or lyrics and then you forget them. Mm -hmm. So always write them down. I have voice memos of me like I'm like in the randomest places like in the shower mm-hmm. sometimes even I'll come yeah. up with ideas or like on a walk in the car and Absolutely. I have like crazy voice memos like wind blasting or whatever like I just feel like ideas can come to you and you have to remember them you have to exactly. get them down yeah. and I think writing is such a creative outlet mm. that's so awesome and so special so I think it can really truly come at any time mm-hmm which is the fun part about it, but also mm. stressful when you're trying to remember it. Because yes. I'll be out with friends and I'll have like a lyric or a melody and I need to step away for a second. Yeah, just so like, I, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> so your song 16 mm-hmm. is your number one on Spotify. Yes, I think is. it has 4 million streams, mm-hmm. something wild. Why do you think that's the song that connected with your fans so much? You know, I, I'm not sure. Mm. I think... I think it's catchy and upbeat and fun and something that people can relate to because it's about like a summer love. And mm-hmm. I feel like everybody has those at least once in their life. And then also within the song, it's about how that person gets away. And I also think the music video had a big tie to the song mm-hmm. because I love when my songs tell stories and can make people feel something. And that music video specifically had a surprise ending that I don't think a lot of people expected. So I think with the music video, it kind of brought the song's true meaning to life. Mm -hmm. So I think in collaboration with the music video and the song, it kind of gave the song what the meaning is, and that was what people could relate to. So I think that's that's probably why, but I'm not really sure. I think you never really know what people are going to like, so you just have to put it out there and see what people think. Yeah, I love music videos, and I think it always, like, elevates the song and really does the storytelling for you. Absolutely. Yeah, do you think you'll do those for every song that you release? Down the line, probably not. Mm -hmm. I do think music videos, for me personally, are very special because they can help to expand the story, similar to how Sixteen did. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to the line where potentially I may be releasing albums or in that regard, it's just Mm -hmm. not feasible to do a music video for every single song. Yeah, And I feel like some music videos, I mean, some songs don't need music videos. Because mm-hmm. they can tell the story so much within themselves. Mm. So I guess we shall see. Yeah. What song are you most proud of? That I've released so far? Mm-hmm. Or not. Maybe there's one that's unreleased. Sure. I think probably more of my unreleased ones. Okay. Because I feel as though for artists, maybe you can relate to this, is when you release music, you're always excited for the next one. Mm-hmm. Or you always put so much thought and effort into the past ones that maybe it almost ruins it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so you keep thinking about the future, but the beauty of being an artist is you can really evolve with time. Mm-hmm. And 
that's what I love about it is because you really truly can evolve and you'll see the difference between your first song and your latest song and you should see a difference and I tell a lot of my friends who are just releasing music that your first single is your first single like you're gonna grow so much and evolve so much from an artist so don't stress about it so much Mm. just have fun with it I think that's the beauty of doing what you love is just really having fun with it and not letting everything else overweigh all that crazy stuff that you can get your mind wrapped into because it's just about having fun and letting people feel something I think that's what music is all about is can you make your audience feel something can you make your audience relate to you because people are going to love a good song if they relate to it or they want to sing along or it makes them feel good or it makes them feel better about a heartbreak or an emotion or Mm. something that they can relate to especially when you're so young like you started when you were really little Mm -hmm. like you're you're gonna grow from that obviously so don't like judge that as that's your your final thing absolutely I look back on summer of 19 and it holds a special place in my heart because the song's a true story but I look back on that and I look back on even just how my voice has matured over time Mm -hmm. and it's fun. It's also an awe moment because you see how little you were. But I think that's the beauty of doing music is you can see how much people have evolved. Even with Taylor Swift, you look back at her first songs Mm -hmm. and you look back at where her songs are now. She's evolved so much as an artist, but not one's better than the other. It's just she's evolved and that's been really cool to see her own evolution so yeah yeah and I think you can see that in your own discography too yeah so you go to Nashville to record Mm -hmm. do you work with the same producer do you change it up when you're there yeah I have been working with the same producer uh for a while now we really mesh well together and vibe well together and I think that's really important also somebody who's willing to collaborate and it's not just one person being the dominant person but it's two people working together Mm -hmm. and we have a great chemistry and work ethic and I can tell him hey I don't like this and he's not going to get upset he's going to work with me because as an artist you can become very picky with your music so since I'm willing to tell him hey I don't like this at all please change this Mm -hmm. he'll do that without getting upset or being like hey you know questioning why he always wants yeah we always we always want to please one another so I think that's the beauty of it and I'm happy that I have found him to be able to guide me but I also think as an artist too you have to grow and develop and mix things up and learn from other people Mm -hmm. I think that's the beauty of working with new writers and producers and people in general or even other artists is collaborating Mm -hmm. and even with YouTube collaborating is so valuable because you learn so much but you also can grow and expand and meet new audiences and meet new people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it takes confidence to like speak up, especially when you're with someone older, a producer who's like experienced or songwriters that are experienced being young. uh, Both. I've felt like, Oh, I can't say anything because they know what they're doing and I don't, but it's really important to always speak up for what you want because it's your song. Absolutely. It's your song. It's your music. It's your brand. It's Mm -hmm. what you're paying them to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So they should always be willing to, work with you and support you you always want someone that supports you and believes in you especially when it comes to a producer yeah you always want someone who believes in you yeah so you were on tour Mm. recently what's your favorite song to perform live oh I would probably have to say 16 just because it is such a crowd favorite Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that one I also enjoyed boy you'll miss me and I don't know I really enjoyed just performing and being able to see people sing your music back to you Mm -hmm. is an insane feeling because so much as an artist you kind of feel I don't want to say isolated but a little bit isolated because you're just producing this music for people to hear but you don't really know you know you can see the numbers of how they're reacting to it right but when you actually see somebody physically sing along Mm -hmm. it's a whole nother special feeling that is really hard to describe Mm -hmm. and it's like wow you're like singing something I created that's a dream come true really yeah and you can see in their eyes like how it's connecting with them yeah which is so valuable and so special so I think it's awesome I mean even seeing just one individual sing along is you feel like oh wow Mm -hmm. this is cool yeah do you get nervous performing yeah I mean yes and no Mm -hmm. I think I would express it more as butterflies than anything Mm. because it wasn't a nervous where I feel like I was going to go throw up, but it's like a butterflies (laughs) and a tinkles because you always want to perform well, right? Mm -hmm. 
I always take the time to go pray before I go on stage and just that really always comforts comforts me mm-hmm. and just take time to step away and collect yourself mm-hmm. and know that everybody that's watching you wants you to succeed. Mm-hmm. Have I have shows where I messed up? Absolutely. We're human. And I think that's what a lot of people have to remember is not every show is going to be amazing you're human and Mm -hmm. that's okay and you have to tell yourself that but you have to realize that every single person in the audience is there because they want to see you pursue your talent and they want you to succeed and they want to support you and they want to applaud you so to be nervous or anything I always tell myself is quite silly because all of them want you to succeed they're not there to tear you down Mm -hmm. or hate you they're there to support you and sing along yeah and even if you mess up in the moment like it passes so quickly and you're just on to the next note and I don't think the audience is like focusing on that moment and I think that's you know sometimes imperfection is perfection because Mm. we're not perfect and that's okay yeah yeah that's important to remember so you're in the movie Megan Mm -hmm. you were the voice of Megan (laughs) yes how was that experience really surreal Mm -hmm. I did not realize how big the film was when I auditioned for it I didn't know really truly what it was for so to see what it has become today is insane and really thrilling to see that so many people have enjoyed it Mm -hmm. horror is a little bit out of your element like you've done other acting things but not horror before right yeah primarily I did tv shows that were comical more like disney Mm -hmm. but I also did other voiceover projects that were just primarily comedic so It was a very different genre, but I really enjoyed it. And I think it was very fun. And it also taught me a lot about horror and how that all works. Because prior to the film, I was deathly afraid of scary movies. But now I can watch them and understand that, hey, I know what goes on behind the scenes. So Mm -hmm. you can kind of breathe and you can watch (laughs) them now. So (laughs) yeah, maybe I should do that then. So I'm not scared of scary movies because I watched Megan. (laughs) I was very scared. I just watched it for you because I usually don't watch horror movies. Yeah. I always have to watch something happy after to like snap me out of the scary mode. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, It was definitely scary. It was a great movie though. You did (laughs) a great job. Thank you so much. Yeah. What's it look like actually doing voice recording? Is it already filmed and you're watching it and doing the voice? Like what's that like? I mean, there's different types of voiceover. Uh, because it depends on the film and the project. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll go in with just a mic, or sometimes you'll go in with a mic and you'll see the TV, and you'll see the actual film rolling. And sometimes you actually have to match the dialogue with the lips of the character, Mm -hmm. and that can also be known as ADR. Uh, So there's different types of voiceover for sure, but it just depends on the project. Mm -hmm. So for Megan, I kind of did... I kind of think a blend of all, because we had some lines and then some lines that I matched, and then... Just, but my time was primarily in the studio because it was obviously a voiceover role. Mm -hmm. Was it strange seeing your voice come out of a character like that? At first, Mm -hmm. yes, but I also thought it was incredibly fun. And then I've kind of gotten used to it now and now I just see it and I think, oh yeah, there's me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's everywhere. Truly it is. They did an incredible marketing campaign and they have just blasted the film everywhere which is a blessing and also just very cool to see how much people are talking about her and enjoying her too I think that was a very scary feeling prior to the film's release is are people gonna like her Mm. because you always want something that you work on just similar to music for people to enjoy so yeah once I saw that people liked it I was like oh Okay. Yeah. Breath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you sang two songs in the movie. Mm-hmm. I am Titanium. Good night, Katie. What was it like singing like Megan versus singing normally? Sure. I think when it came to Megan, I used more of a hushed, creepy esque tone. Mm-hmm. It was very different from what I usually sing because I sing primarily country pop music. So for Megan, I just really imagined what she would sound singing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kind of tuned in my character that I used for the film to incorporate that with her voice. But I was also given direction to sing worse than I usually sing, which was quite comical to me because mm-hmm. I've never been told to sing worse in my life. But <laughs> I was told to do that. And then they wanted more of a Sesame Street, Kermit the Frog type of childish. Okay. 
vibe mm-hmm. <laughs> tone yeah so i kind of got to play with that and have a lot of fun with it i'm so happy i got to sing in the film i think that's something i love most is being able to collaborate my passions all together so to be able to do that was really fun and unexpected because they didn't put that in the trailer which i think was smart because a lot of people went to the theater not expecting that mm-hmm. so when it came out it was a comical moment and i think that's important to the film because not only is it a horror film but it's also a horror comedy so. yeah so uh, you know austin butler just played uh, uh, absolutely <laughs> yes you know who he I is everybody I saw does. that movie four times i haven't seen it yet <gasps> you must i know i, I must. saw it four times yeah <laughs> i'm gonna have to watch it on my tv now i don't think it's in theaters anymore it's incredible yeah okay so i've just seen like the cultural moment of after he was off of elvis he kept his elvis voice mm-hmm. he like his voice is deeper and people think it's funny and he was like it's just part of me now i played that character for so long yeah but it's part of me and so i was wondering with you with Megan I know she's very different from yourself but is part of that still a part of you have you like kept her voice in places like he did um I don't really think so I think I can tune into her really quickly if I want to but I don't think it's affected me and who I am necessarily Mm -hmm. there are parts of her dialogue like the word insane that I use quite frequently because of the film but I don't think it has affected me Overall, it's a part of me because I feel like any character that you play becomes a part of you mm-hmm. because it holds a special value. But it hasn't affected me in which I've become her speaking tone all the time. But I feel as though people can hear her in my speaking tone. Mm-hmm. But it's also something that I tune into. And because she is very much of a villain, very much different from myself, Yeah, I think that's probably why. Maybe if she was somebody more similar to myself, mm-hmm. it would be a different story. But... I mean, I can tune into her, but it's not something that's on the everyday where people are, oh, she become Megan now. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, I think the movie was like scary because I feel like I could see it happening, like with how technology is yeah. advancing. Like I could see it happening. That's why it was so frightening to see like a doll who's in your life. Like there's like Alexa or there's these different things that are sort of doing that already. Yeah, and I think that's what the film was trying to promote Mm. is that this is a possibility. Technology is only increasing more and more and it leaves the audience to question whether this is something that could or couldn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the thrilling part of the film, but also a scary part of the film, but also a bit of a warning Mm. to audiences out there is how much are we allowing technology in our lives? Just how you mentioned with Siri and Alexa and... Mm -hmm all of those robot-esque individuals, it's scary to think because it is something that could potentially happen. And I think that's part of what the film was trying to bring awareness about is, hey, how much are we allowing these technological devices to control us or potentially take over? Mm -hmm. I like the way you said that, potentially take over. Mm -hmm. Freaky. (laughs) Scary. Yeah, scary. What other shows have you been a part of acting or voice acting? Sure. So when it comes to voice acting, I was on Sophia the First, Vampirina, a show on Cartoon Network called Infinity Train. I also did some work on a show called Last Tycoon. I was on Raven's Home for a little while, which was really fun Mm because I had a dream of being on Disney when I was younger. And I also worked on a show called Teachers, another show called Maggie, which is on ABC. Was it ABC? Yes, it was ABC. Mm. And let's see. I don't know. I've been doing this for seven years. So there's been there's been quite it's been quite a journey. I definitely think what I like to describe this industry as is a lot. It's a journey. Wait, what do I say? It's a marathon, not a race. So you'll experience a lot. And for anybody that's pursuing it that's going to be 95 percent rejection five percent success so as long as you truly love it keep going and it'll get there it's just it's just time yeah what is the main thing that you are focused on of all the things that you do you know a lot of people ask me that and I struggle to pick one Mm -hmm. because I do think there's no reason to put a limit on it I think I can act sing I think acting and singing are my two biggest And I really love enjoying, like, I really do enjoy creating content. So when people ask me that, I I don't like to put a label on it because I think, why can't I do it all? Mm. Right? Yeah. Because why not? No one's stopping me if I do what I love and can hopefully get opportunities in both realms. Mm -hmm. I don't need to pick one. 
Yeah. And you're going to change as you grow up. You might be super passionate about something next year that you weren't now. Yeah. So just and I also think it. I'm just getting any opportunity that I get that's mm-hmm. in my field and in my passion that I want to pursue, I'll pursue. Mm-hmm. Because I'm still young and I love what I do and I'm still learning every day especially when it comes to music and acting. So I don't like to limit myself, but that's one of the hardest questions I get is what do I favor over the other? And I, I truly can't pick. I mm. truly can't because I enjoy s- both of them so much. And they're both similar but different in their own ways. Mm-hmm. And that's what's fun. Yeah. I'm going to ask you the big final question. All right. What's a dream so big that it scares you? That's a hard one. You know, I think if I could put out my dreams I would say being able to have some albums out being able to tour and meet individual like meet supporters and individuals that have supported me for a long time Mm. I also think at the same time I want to do more films absolutely and tv of course so I think just blending all of that together in a little blender would be a dream so big, mm-hmm. uh, but also, I don't know, I think meeting someone, having a family, all that down the mm-hmm. line too is like blending all that in a blender and being able to have a house here, being able to have a house in Nashville, being able to have a house, I don't know, somewhere cool and being able to travel and meet people. I don't know. I think that's kind of what I would like to do is mm-hmm. just do everything that I love and also, I don't know, just be the best person that I can be and have a good faith. And Mm -hmm. I think that's my dream so big, but I guess, I guess we'll see. (laughs) I feel like you're already achieving all those things other than a husband, a family, but that'll come for sure. I mean, I'm only 18. So you're only 18. You have plenty of time, plenty of time, but yeah, it's fun. And I, I'm hopeful that I'll continue to do all the things that I love, but yeah, I I guess time will tell. And I'm just going to keep being who I am and working hard so yeah <laughs> one step at a time like absolutely. we said one step absolutely yeah well thanks for talking with absolutely. us absolutely I had a good time me too it you're so fun. sweet that was fun. <laughs>